My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. This is the antiphon that will be sung or proclaimed today at Mass, the day on which we celebrate the exaltation of the holy cross. There are beautiful polyphonic renditions of this antiphon in Latin that date back centuries. Adoramus te Christe et benedici tibi quia per santam crucem tuam redemisti mundum. Why would Christians of different generations come to exalt, glorify, praise the cross if that is where you died? Dying between two thieves, two criminals, was that not a humiliating death for Jesus? These hymns are a living expression of tradition, a tradition of faith. Because of their beauty, they will continue to be interpreted over the centuries to come, transmitting the faith that the Holy Cross of Christ is a plus for you and for me. Because it is by your Holy Cross, Jesus, that you have redeemed the world. Today's podcast has a plus for you. After the 10-minute reflection, you can listen to and pray with one of the renditions of this Latin hymn. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. One reason why we exalt your holy cross, Lord, is because of what you explained to Nicodemus, that man who came to you by night seeking answers to his questions. Just as I seek answers to my questions, like what is the meaning of suffering? What is the meaning of death? And you said to Nicodemus, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Your holy cross, Jesus, is not a condemnation of the world, but its salvation. It's not a condemnation of my life, but the root of my being saved, the root of my salvation. The suffering and death of the Son of God on a cross is what we exalt today. Jesus, you willed to undergo humiliation and pain and suffering and death for me so that when I am humiliated or I am in pain or I suffer for one reason or the other, I may find meaning by uniting myself to your Holy Cross. This is why the Holy Cross is a plus for me. Are you suffering in any way today? Maybe you have a headache or something went wrong yesterday. Are you worried about something? Are you sad because of a crisis in your relationship with someone? A family member or a good friend? Maybe you're simply asking, why suffering? Why me? Why now? Why in this unexpected form? And I encourage you to raise your eyes to a crucifix. Maybe a crucifix in a church. Or you might have a crucifix at home. Or you could buy one of these little pocket crucifixes that you can carry with you in your pocket or in your bag. When these questions come and you really don't know what the meaning of your suffering is, look at the cross. 
Look at Christ crucified. Kiss the cross if you can. And repeat those words that Christians have said and sung for centuries. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. St. John Paul II, that is the man who was Pope between 1978 and 2005, was an incredibly athletic man in his youth. And even when he became Pope, he continued to be very athletic. But from 1998 onwards, his activity was reduced to practically nil, little by little. The Parkinson's disease that he had was slowing him down. And the media kept speculating that he was going to resign. The pain was written all over his face. Towards the end of his pontificate, his figure was bent and he needed to support himself on his pastoral staff. It's a stick carried by the Pope. And often he would be seen leaning on the staff with, which had a cross on it. John Paul II did not hide his infirmity, but wore his infirmities like badges of honor. Someone suggested to him that he might consider retiring because he had trouble walking and his hand was trembling. And the Pope replied, fortunately, I don't run the church with my feet or my hands, but with my mind. End of story. Oh. Could he muster the strength to joke in the midst of so much suffering? Well, because John Paul II knew that the Holy Cross was a plus. He knew that there was meaning in the cross he was suffering because he could unite his pain, the humiliation of not being able to move around like before. He could unite his suffering and eventually unite himself in dying, dying with you, dying with you, Jesus. He found meaning in suffering by raising his eyes to Jesus Christ crucified. Suffering will never be easy. You may still ask why, why me, why now, why in this unexpected form? Jesus, grant me the grace to raise my eyes to you on the Holy Cross and find meaning in my own suffering. To look up at you in a crucifix in my room, to kiss the crucifix that I carry with me, and co-redeem with you. When I look up at the cross, I see that you don't complain. Help me not to complain about my problems. You're not annoyed when you are on the cross. In fact, you listen to the thief who recognizes his sins and you're forgiving with him. Jesus, help me not to be annoyed when I suffer. Help me to offer up my sufferings, if it's possible, with joy and even a sense of humor, like St. John Paul II. I'm going to end this prayer thanking you for the resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you, Jesus, have communicated to me in these moments of prayer. I ask Mary, my mother, and St. Joseph also, to intercede for me so that I see the crosses of today as a plus. I'll try not to complain, Jesus, and repeat slowly or, or perhaps even let this hymn ring in my mind. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Adoramus te Christe et benedicimus tibi, quia per santum crucem tuam Redimisti mundum.